Hello everyone, I'm your host MX2, and in this video we'll be going over the changes between box cutter 719 underscore 9 and box cutter 719 underscore 10. For the most part, the improvements aim to be topological improvements to improve behavior for whenever it comes to subdivision modeling. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it and begin talking about what is new. Typically, whenever I'm using box cutter, I keep my sort settings as default, as you see here. I just want to show that subsurf sort is currently not on, meaning that subsurf is kind of at the mercy of the stack. And to show what I mean by all of this is I'm going to just perform a box cut. And then from here, we're just going to add a bevel, but I'm going to press three in order to add a subdivision bevel, where basically we are protecting our parameters. And after adding that, we can press Q and go under add modifier and add a triangulate which will triangulate everything that's an end gon from here we can now add a subdivision to this mesh and if we alt v jump into wireframe we see what's going on so now if i perform a cut we see that the modifiers have had their order shifted which has resulted in this mesh being turned into something that i did not want it to of course we could go in and change settings to make these things be better accommodated but in the event that I'm using knife box, we definitely do not want the modifier order being changed under any circumstances. And pretty much we only want blue box to be a topology knife. So I pressed alt E in order to change this from fast to be exact or vice versa. In this case, changing it to be fast from exact because it was quite slow. But just like that, we are now able to perform topology cuts in this without having to have any sort of sort issues happening. And that's just because of knife. Um, a large discussion has been had internally and it's been determined that we definitely do not want knife to be moving any modifiers under any circumstances. Of course, if we wanted to make it work out with cut, it is just a matter of us going in and actually turning on subsurf sort. So now that we have it set up, once we get in and we begin performing our cuts, we see that subdivision is being kept at the end of the stack courtesy of sort. But in those cases that you're just using knife to just perform quick topology cuts, we will no longer be dealing with sort under any circumstances whenever it comes to knife. And that is for both object mode and edit mode. So as you see here, I'm able to continuously cut topology into this. If we turn our modifiers off, we can actually see what our original mesh is looking like wrong modifiers we want to toggle the visibility in the viewport so now we're able to just cut the mesh and nothing is happening in our viewport whenever it comes to our modifiers so we will just turn them back on placing us back where we were and just like that sort is no longer a thing whenever it comes to knife With box cutter, there's also been some changes with the way it behaves with knife project. One of the easiest ways to force box cutter into knife project is just clicking this icon for align to view, which means that whenever you're working inside of knife, every cut drawn will be aligned to view. So as we're drawing these cuts, they are all being aligned to view, regardless of whether we're drawing on top of the surface or drawing off of the surface. And if we look through on the other side, we see that we've projected through all the way to the other side. One of the interesting changes with the latest versions of box cutter is that if we were to draw a shape in 2D and rotate our view, no matter how we're looking at it, whenever we perform this process, we are now going to perform a view cut based off of the shape's normal direction that it was initially drawn instead of basing it off of the view no matter how you rotate it, which results in it having a little bit more predictable control. However, in addition to being able to draw and just cut through like you're seeing, you now also have the functionality to toggle that off in the helper in the event that you no longer want to cut through. We can now draw shapes and whenever we hit spacebar, we see that those shapes only draw on the faces that are facing us and aren't actually cutting through all the way to the other side. So similar to what was done in one of the previous updates to hard ops, you are now able to do that in box cutter as well. In fact, to show this even better, we can press Q, go under operations and clean the mesh to just revert it back to normal by resolving, by dissolving degenerates. And we will just go in and draw some shapes utilizing knife project. And if we look on the other side, we see that we don't see anything showing up 
because cut through is toggled off. But if we toggle it back on, we see that we're able to get in here and draw these shapes. And when we look at the other side, we see that they project it through to the other side. So the improvements had with knife also improves its ability whenever it comes to implying geometry on other forms. So let us just take this cube and we are just going to stretch it out, scale it up a little bit, and we'll grab this edge and control B and just bevel it. And we'll mirror this to the other side using mesh machine. And we're just going to add a loop and just stretch it out and grab this whole shape and just scale it up on the Z axis. And we're just simply going to grab this area and just bevel it in order to round it out nicely, giving us something like this. In the event that we wanted to imply a circle, you at least now are able to start off the mesh and notice that I'm using a view dot because I'm no longer hovering over the mesh where I would get dots based on object. If we start off the mesh, we get dots aligned to view where I'm just going to bring a dot over here and begin drawing a circle. We'll use Alt in, in order to draw it out freely. And by right clicking and placing it in this pause state, we could press Shift T in order to taper it, allowing us to get something like this. And Control X will change it over to knife. And if we were to press T, we could also go into helper and adjust how many sides we want. For example, maybe we don't want 24. Maybe we want something like 16, which is a lot more negotiable. So if we were to just simply turn off cut through so we don't cut through the other side, whenever we press spacebar, we have now cut this geometry into this shape. So when it comes to cleaning this up, it's just a matter of us going in and just dissolving these areas by merging them at their nearest junction. So I'm just going to do that very fast for this example. Just wanted to show what it is that we're going for whenever it comes to all this work with knife because there is definitely an end goal and it is to you know make knife a lot more topologically capable and turn it into kind of a quick knife of sorts whenever it comes to just making topological changes so there's some dramatic improvements at work here that are just not been going into depth hard enough to really exaggerate on but to be able to just cut in things just like we're seeing it was definitely a bit of a journey for box cutter to get to this point so i am definitely a proud of the work that has gone into it so now that we have the shape basically implied and solved we can just mark this with the seam we'll grab this circle on the inside just pull it in and just like that this is pretty much the workflow that I would use on some of these Tide detergent bottles. But just like that, we can now use Box Cutter to really imply detail on these pieces utilizing knife and based off of view, even when hovering over the mesh, even with our shapes being drawn, thanks to some of the improvements. So just to show it again, I'm starting off of the mesh and we're just going to bring out a blue box. And if I want to get the loop on the inside as well, we could just press Shift T in order to taper it. And by pressing spacebar, we've now cut in this detail. So of course, a few areas did not work out as intended, but it does get easier and easier as we continue on with our work when it comes to getting these sort of shapes where they need to go very quickly because you know even the work of solving it is something that we're still working on refining and speeding up and optimizing as you can see here but it does get faster whenever it comes to converting all of this to subdivision we are definitely a large step of the way there So whenever it comes to using Boolean operations, it does require that you have a shape selected. If you have no shape selected, you will be in what's called make, which is a gray box. Now, as of this particular version, 719.10, if you draw a make box, it will now be placed in the active collection. So if we look over on the side, we see that currently it's been placed in the cutters collection. However, the moment that we make it real, we see that this box has been placed in the active collection at hand, which is a deviation from what it used to do before, which is where it would actually place it outside of the active collection and place it in what's called the scene collection, making it propagate 
throughout your scene no matter what collection you were in. So for example, we now have two collections. I could press one, two to jump between these collections. Now that I'm in collection two, we see that we're now placing shapes in collection two instead of just dropping them in the root collection. If we press one, we're now in the main collection of this scene where we can now begin dropping shapes in our main collection. And if I press two, we are now in our secondary collection where you can begin dropping shapes in that active collection. So now we have active collection support whenever it comes to box cutters. So this is something important that you want to keep in mind because if we were say drawing on a shape and we were to press A and switch this shape from cut to make on top of another shape with auto parenting on, we see that the shape has kind of disappeared from view. We do see an icon appear on the side of the shape, but I don't think users will be so keen as to expand it and look inside to see that the shape has been parented to it and not just disappeared. But also keep in mind that in the event that you're ever wondering what happened to a shape, you are able to select it. And by pressing numpad period, you're able to focus on a shape in your outliner. Just like if you press numpad period in your 3D view, you're also able to focus on a shape in your 3D view. But just letting users know that make boxes will no longer be drawn in the scene collection and will now show up in the active collection.